of the three recipients of this year's Nobel Prize in Physics, Anne Lillier and Pierre Agostini, initiated and conducted their experiments at what is now the Interactions, Dynamics and Lasers Laboratory at CEA Saclay. I visited this lab and asked Hugo Maru, who is a researcher there, about the experiments that led to this year's Physics Nobel. So in our initial experiments, Anne Lullier was studying light matter interaction at very high intensity. Okay? And when she did her experiment, she was actually surprised to see that new frequencies were created at very high energy and actually you get a lot of these high energy frequencies up to the X-ray regime. This was a very uh, exciting news because the fact that you have these new frequencies gives you the opportunity to have attosecond pulses. To give you a, a, a glimpse of what an attosecond pulse is, if you compare one attosecond to one second, it's the same thing as comparing one second to the age of the universe. So following from uh, Anne's discovery of the possibility to have, to have attosecond pulses, Pierre Agostini did actually the experiment to actually measure the temporal characteristic of these pulses. So the work from Anne Lullier and Pierre Agostini uh, demonstrated that you can have trains of attosecond pulses. In the experiment, you have a succession of, of, of attosecond pulses, but you don't have an isolated attosecond pulse. For that, you had to wait for the work done by Ferran Krauss when he was able to synthesize and diagnose the fact that you can generate a single attosecond burst. I asked Hugo about the research that is currently going on in this lab and its applications. So Anulia did uh, her discovery here in the, in, the, in the 80s while Pierre Gossini worked during the 80s and early 2000s in, in the laboratory. And now we're trying to, building up from this work, we're trying to develop new aspects of attosecond science. So what we do here, for example, is that since we can access light matter interaction on the attosecond time scale, what, for example, we can study is how long the photoelectric effect takes. This is you know, one application, but also now you can study electrons' behavior in, in semiconductors, you can study electrons' behaviors in liquids as well on this time scale. And this has a lot of application to study, for example, you know, in a chemical reaction, how long does a bond takes to actually form or break.